Morning, everybody. On today's agenda, we have our usual hack plus <laughs> hack fest planning uh, discussion, um, and then we have uh, some quarterly updates to get through. So we have Aroha followed by Composer. Um, next week is Indy, and then for the working groups, did we get the healthcare working group in? Uh, Tom? Let me check quickly. See if that came in overnight. Uh, no, nothing yet. Okay. Unfortunately. So we'll have to defer that one. And then we have a proposal for a public sector working group to go through. So anybody else have any other items for today's agenda? Okay. If not, Todd, you can kick it off with Hackfest. Yeah, just uh, the same quick reminders, June 27th to 29th, Hackfest in Amsterdam. Uh, in the coming weeks, uh, let's start pulling together agenda for that. I think uh, a little more structure is one of the things people would like to see within that and uh, just some advanced topics. Um, yeah. Beyond that, uh, October 3rd and 4th, Montreal will be the next one. We'll get Reg Page uh, booted up for that soon. But otherwise, nothing else in the short term from my view. Okay. So right. just one quick comment on the agenda. I think it could be clear on the fact that the first day is this introduction day where we kind of expect newbies to come. Is it still on the registration page or where would you like that noted? On the agenda. Okay. Okay. Noted. Somebody's, somebody needs to go on mute. Um, Okay, thanks, Todd. All right, so first up is Aroha. Um, who is on from Aroha to present? Yeah, it, it's me. Okay, so uh, we have uh, pretty nice results on the April and March. So we actually have a better release on in the end of March, and we have like client libraries for, for Java, Python, and, and C++, yeah. And also we, we have made a documentation that's available in English and also Japanese. And I think there is some uh, open source uh, uh, updates from community that even translate some Korean, not sure. Also, we have uh, improved the deployment uh, based on Ansible. Uh, we also have uh, fixes for st stability and the per per performance overall. So basically, we have pretty poor uh, performance when we just copying stuff and all, all that things makes the performance really bad so we fix and towards the that month and the following i think we are going to aim that thing and also we have made a some kind of framework it's internal and it helps us to write more integration tests so we have written about like I don't know, maybe for now it's like 100 tests, even more. Also, as after the release, we have made a Node.js library, we made gRPC streaming API, some optimization, as I said. Uh, and also we have problems with the bug, the, so of them have been reported. So I just was interrupted by this meeting to say about IROFA. So I just going to merge it after the meeting. So, uh, and the second one is actually is in development st uh, stay. So basically it's not really a bug in terms of production version. So if you have any question, I would like to answer them. Any questions? 
Um, just a question, just to give you the stage. Um, do you have any plans to integrate with other projects? I know it's difficult, and I know that you know some other organizations are putting in a lot of kind of effort and resources. But is there anything you're like planned in the coming quarter or two to do more stuff with? I don't know, like just throwing right like the, the EVM or, or or some identity or some I don't know something that may work or others can contribute to if you want to kind of engage community. Just a question. So, so you mean like some new features or, or other improvements? I, I no, I'm, well, I'm, I'm mainly, mainly asking if, if, if like, you know, is there, is there a review kind of course, right? Is there any plan or if somebody wants to join the project and help either on new features or on some integrations with other projects? Do you have something like that in mind? Is it still on track or just wondering, right? Because we have a lot of projects and many moving parts. Just wondering where, where you are on, on that thinking. Like, did it, did it, you are closer to the project. I'm not that familiar, to be honest. Like, this is the least familiar project that I'm, I'm less involved with this project than the rest of all other projects, personally. So I'm just asking, did you have any plan or do you have any plan or do you think, like, knowing enough kind of the technical parts and the market, do you think there's something on the roadmap that can be integrated with your project? Do you need help? Will all the projects be able to integrate with you? Does anything like that make sense now? Is it too early? I'm just, just, it's a very broad question, I know. Just wanna give you enough space for that. Uh, so I'm not sure about the, let's say, official version, uh, but I think I have something in my mind. So we have uh, definitely plans. Uh, some, as I said, uh, focusing on stability and security and the the things that it can be basically uh, guaranteed to be used in production and will definitely not fail uh, some kind of fails so we have some sorry yeah i'm just in a loud place so i'm trying to mute myself in between questions and answers so is there any project that will be, like, will it make sense? I'm just throwing it, I'm not trying, it's not a tricky question, right? Is it, does it make sense to integrate Composer with Hero, how do you think? Or some identity, or Fabric CA, or something, like, I don't know, Sotus, the EVM that we have with Boro. Is it, is it something, it can be, like, in a year's time, I, I don't mind. I'm just trying to understand, if, do you need something to, as, as something that will accelerate or help you integrate with other things? Or do you feel that Hero is self-contained? Like you have your identity piece, you have the permissioning piece, you have the gadget piece, and you don't, does it make any sense to integrate with others? Is this what I'm asking? Yeah, I'm I think we, we have kind of missing the integration between the other projects in Hyperledger, like Composer, or, or I'm not really good at the other one, but I think Composer is most, most suitable. So, okay, okay. Blockchain so, Explorer, will that be useful for you or not so much? Yes, definitely. We okay. doesn't have tools for, for exploring the blocks actually now. Okay. All right, thank you. That was my, my only question. Cheers. Hi, this is Dan from the TSP. Can you hear me? Yep. Hello? We can hear you. Okay. Sorry, having a little uh, confusion with the mute buttons earlier. Um, so uh, I missed the, the name of the presenter for, for Iroha, so I apologize for that. But, but I'd like to hear from you how you feel your community interaction is going with uh, the rest of the Hyperledger community. Mm -hmm. so good question. I think uh, we have kind of diversity in, of tools of, for in, interaction, for communication. So beside the, let's say, official Rocket chat, we also use Telegram and we also use Gitter and maybe something else. So maybe uh, we have missing, uh, because of the uh, such of number of chats we may miss something on the 
rocket chat so we kind of interested let's say uh, i would say in um, maybe breaching the these chats so it might be possible to communicate and doesn't spend time on the uh, on the switching between them so I'll, and for the direct interaction for hyperledger i think it's okay we basically have mailing mostly and probably in hyperledger as well uh, in hyperledger or chat as well yeah. so did i answer your question yeah, I think my recommendation to you, if if you wanted to make more progress on uh, your integration with the Hyperledger community, would be to shut down your other chat platforms and transition all of those users to um, chat.hyperledger.org, and then you you would have that, all the conversations in a single place, and it would be part of that that official Hyperledger communication platform. Uh, Chat is just one aspect, though, of, of being involved with the community. How, how do you feel other aspects of, of being part of the community are working out for the Idoha project? Things like Hackfests, um, this TSC meeting, for example, uh, other things? Uh, well, actually, this TSC meeting is uh, the first one for me, actually. And for the Hackfests, I'm, I'm not really in it, so maybe some other guys may answer that, but I have no uh, idea what, what, what was happening there or going to happen there. So I, also, I am actually uh, once participated in Hackathon and uh, just say a few words that we have Aroha and the guys actually implemented so it was pretty easy uh, at least with, with my help and uh, I would say that uh, people pretty like the solution in terms of interaction with it I also have some positive comments in all of the chats uh, I think mostly in Telegram uh, and yeah, I think, I think that is, that it. Okay. Thanks. Um, and then I guess my, my last question is on your maintainer diversity and contributor diversity. How do you feel that, that those are trending? And do you have any challenges there? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so for the previous year and for the for this small part of the, the new year, there's, there's definitely increasing number of new contributors, contribu contributors. And they, uh, from, from pretty new, uh, for the last few months, I think, uh, have contributed something uh, something helpful, helpful, really helpful. So, actually, I I just found a tutorial for the Iroha that just random guy have written, and also we have got a tutorial for the mobile uh, application, uh, like installing all the environment and setting things up and maybe we uh, lack the some deep technical uh, comments in the project itself so as long as the code by base is pretty hard to understand by the like usual contributor of open source contributor, it's really hard to make a make some fixes. So uh, the comments to the direct comments to the code base are actually pretty, let's say, simple, 
and doesn't include like, uh, much help for maintainers actually that might be a problem yes. okay what kind of things do you do to try to attract contributors uh well i think we publish like issues pretty rarely that can be done easily in a matter of hours maybe uh i think mm, so people are uh, often opening open issues and we also trying to support them to uh, solve it by their organ so we are trying to help like the guys who already open the, the issues uh, I th can we help you in any way like acquire more people get more maintainers assuming that you are going to move back to the hyperledger chat do you need anything on the TSC for many of our members, our maintainers, any projects or conditions? Well, I, I would say that uh, some help uh, can be uh, uh, there is some need in help. Uh, so, but I'm not sure how exactly the community can help. In, in solving the task of inviting of contrib contributors. Okay. Among the different priorities that you have uh, on the Iroha project, where would you say that contributor diversity falls? Contributor diversity falls? Where, where in your priorities is contributor diversity? If you, if you had to rank the things that you're working on, is, is the main thing maybe bug fixing or some feature that, that's blocking your 1.0? Or um, I'm just kind of curious what, what level of importance that is for your project. Mm, importance of the contributors, uh, well, it, it's hard to understand, I think. It's hard to realize, but I think it, it's uh, pretty important to uh, maintain a good community around. So, uh, like, maintainers cannot help all of the people. So, uh, but people can help, like, the other ones. So, this uh, di di diversity may help in terms of the communication and uh, between the people who are interested in the project. Uh, and in terms of fixing bugs or like contributing new features, uh, well, I don't really know actually. Okay. Uh, it's. I think it's important from the uh, the hyperledger governance perspective that we have as diverse as possible a set not just of contributors on each project but also of maintainers. Um, the maintainers right now for for Iroha, you, would you characterize those as as predominantly from Sotomitsu? Well, it, it, it's not really change. Uh, I think yes. Okay. So beyond just regular contributors, I think something that would be important for the health of your project is to work on uh, on the maintainer diversity. And I think that that the way that's been discussed before is our goal there is that if any one company leaves a project. You don't want the pre the project to die. So the more the more companies that you have involved there, the more active contributors you, that you have involved, you're less susceptible to a single failure, kind of a, a project fault tolerance, if you will. Yeah, indeed, good advice. 
things I will uh, broadcast to the team. Okay, thank you. By the way, last question. Sorry, is it, is, who am I talking? Is it, is it so? It's not Nicole, is it Sergey Nikolai? I don't know who who is like talking on behalf of the project. Just just for the for the summary and the record. Uh, I didn't get the name. Sorry. Yeah, my name is Eugene. I think you. I just type in the chat. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm I'm in New York, which is a zoo. So every time I unmute, head breaks loose. So I'll just I'm just gonna stop again. Thank you. Hi, Eugene. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> So I guess I would throw, this is Mick, I'd throw one more thing in there and and I think we're kind of happy to work with you. I know that in the architecture working group in particular, we haven't had as much input from the Aroa team about the kind of decisions and motivation behind that. Um, if, if the problem there is a timing one, I know we've been open to moving the times around. Um, uh, I don't believe Rom's heard back on a suggestion from anyone from the Aroa team about how we could get a better engagement from you on that. But I know we would like to get more of your input on sort of the overall uh, architectural direction, if that's possible for you to incorporate that into your plan. And for the record, we know it's difficult. Like we are running a small company as well, and you know we understand. So yeah, that's why. That's how I started. Right? Not every company has the same resources, but if if you can open up or try to at least show the way for others to join you, so that you can improve it with your your not just the contributors diversity, but the maintenance diversity and the outreach. That that and if we can help, just like yeah, we 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 offered. And we'll, I think each and every single one of us will be happy to. Yeah, and I think just to, to kind of reinforce that comment, Jonathan, I think it's right, it's dead on, which is it's hard for a small company, we know that. But one of the advantages of this project being a part of Hyperledger is um, that, that we can build a community that goes beyond a single company. You know, we should be able to offload yep. um, some of that into a, a, a more diverse developer community, for example. Yeah, indeed. Thanks for the comments. I think we, we will think about the way of increasing the number of maintainers from other companies. Thanks. I can just tell you that a lot of companies helped us. It just took me a year to understand that I need to ask for help. It took me a while to realize that, yeah, I mean, in, in the big boys kind of game. And when I, it, took me, it took me a while to realize that I should reach out and ask questions and ask for help and advice. And, References and yeah, so yeah, I think you, you should do that. All right, I'm done. All right, anybody else? So yeah, I would I would definitely you know concur that you know we're here, <laughs> the TSC in particular, but um, you know the community generally um, to help and you know to mix point. You know, we'd like to get a lot of these projects to the point where we're doing a lot of, <clears throat> you know, a lot more sort of cross-project collaboration, but also where we're growing the diversity of committers and maintainers, such that even if, you know, a uh, major player walked away, things would still have legs. So, um, you know, anything we can do to help, let us know. Okay, next up is Composer. Simon, you on? Hi there. Uh, right, I'll, I'll start walking through the project update. I don't know if anyone wants to bring it up on screen. Um, the link is in the... I think uh, Todd put the link in the chat. Cool. In the rocket chat. All right then. Um, so for Project Health, um, we've just kept on doing what we've been doing. Um, we've been delivering our week, weekly releases, sometimes on a Monday, sometimes on a Thursday. Um, and I'll put my hands up. We've skipped a few, um, given the Easter holidays in the UK. Um, but we are st still churning out regular releases with either fixes, uh, fixes or features um, so the community can pick them up 
Um, mm -hmm. And we are seeing bug reports come in from the community and we try and turn those around as quickly as possible, um, either via answering them um, and you know, some of them are user errors or they're actual genuine bugs, which we don't fix. Um, we're continuing to see a lot, a lot of questions on Rocket Chat and Stack Overflow. Um, and whilst we're, and I think I mentioned this on the last TSC call where we discussed Composer, um, we are seeing more people start to contribute, um, but most of those contributions at this time are still quite minor um, around documentation updates. Although last week we did get something quite big, um, and I'll cover that shortly. Um, we don't have any issues to report to the TSC at this time. Um, as per that meeting previously, we are working towards a 1.0. Um, I wouldn't call that an issue. We are, we are progressing the things we discussed around the uh, legal, um, copyright headers, et cetera, and also the security scan that's booked for May. Um, what have we done in the last quarter? Um, so apart from working with our quite large community um, and answering all those questions, um, and we still have two dedicated people in the IBM team answering questions, but we also see, we're also still seeing um, people that are Composer users start to answer questions from other Composer users, which is really, really good to see. Um, and we're also seeing discussions in GitHub as well. Um, we released a significant release in the last three months, um, Composer 19, uh, 0 0.19, um, and this is the version of Composer that we think is significant because we think it's ready for production. Um, I won't go through all of the features here. Um, I think I've discussed them before, unless there's any particular questions on them. Um, but the, the big contribution that I mentioned earlier was from uh, Nicola who um, delivered API key support for the Composer REST server, which means you can easily stand up a, a Composer REST server for which we generate a set of RESTful APIs and you can specify an API key to use to secure that REST server. And before nice. we either had no authentication or we had authentication with LDAP or OAuth2, um, but this is a, a much simpler way to secure your REST server um, during development or test. Um, and this was a really nice contribution. It included both code, and tests, unit tests, and uh, integration tests, and also documentation. So it was a really complete PR, so it was really good to see that come in. Um, hopefully we'll start to see them contribute more. Um, that's sort of it. Um, there's no changes to our maintainers since the last update. It's still myself and Caroline from IBM and Dan from Claws. Um, and the diversity of the organizations contributing has gone down from the last update. Um, although we have a few more unknown companies uh, contributing. Any questions? Hi, Simon. This is Dan. Hey, Dan. You mentioned, hey, uh, you mentioned something about copyright headers. Could you yeah, clarify so, that? Um, so Tracy has been running the phosology scans on our source code, um, and we and it dug up a lot of files that don't have copyright headers. Uh, or license headers rather, um, that state the file is licensed. Oh, okay. license. So we're having to go through and fix all of those. Okay, I see, yeah, just the license headers. Okay, um, yeah, that did remind me though, Brian, I don't know if you're on the call, but um, I think it's a little bit off topic, but we still need some clarity on official hyperledger policy for copyright banners at the tops of the files. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's. Yeah, I, I have that. That's my next tab to get to. <laughs> Good. There are several of us who want to see the results of that. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. Okay. A anyway, back back to the uh, composer agenda. Thanks for the update. I think that was very complete. Okay. Thank you. And I gather then that you know you're working with Steve and uh, on the facility stuff, and then. Um, I don't know if Dave is on or, you know, are we still on track with the uh, security audit? As far as I know, it's still booked for the, the <coughs> stuff. I... Yeah, hey, I'm, a, I'm here. Sorry, it took me a second there to get to the mute button. Um, yep, uh, I had a meeting with uh, Graham and our new account manager, Miles, at Netitude yesterday. Um, they're still on track. I did some intro emails with Graham and Caroline. Um, my apologies for not including you, um, but uh, yeah, 
everything's good there i think we're going to do a meeting later I, you know what we're still trying to figure it out i think but yeah there's going to be a kickoff meeting here pretty quick to get the two of them together or the maintainers together with graham to talk about um or to do the, the initial kickoff about um giving graham some direction so yeah we're on track okay any other hey simon hello hi this is Tracy. Uh, so a uh, question about the, the comment about the contributor diversity going down. I, I think in the same way that we asked questions of Iroha, is there something that we can be doing differently or something that uh, we should be looking at to, to help with the contributor diversity for Composer? Um, if, you, if you have great ideas for getting people contributing, um, then I'm all ears. Um, I, I think we're trying to be as open as possible. Um, not to uh, not to repeat myself, but I think we're we're certainly out there on Rocket Chat, and we are talking to people out there, um, and the same for GitHub, um, and we're also still running those weekly community calls. Um, but people just aren't contributing for whatever reason. I think I heard Jonathan mention at the start of the call that he had a way to uh, get lots of people. So um, maybe we'll just take him Simon, on. <laughs> quickly, this is I think down. Jonathan's offering to do some development. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, that's true. The problem is that people paid us to do some stuff and they don't want us to contribute it back. That's my only concern here. Yeah. So Simon, this is Leonard. Um, I would like to contribute. I just wouldn't be able to write any JavaScript code. <laughs> my code is not all that good. So uh, your community meeting schedule is up to date. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, it is up to date. And, um, and they, it and runs in different time zones as well, so we we okay. most of the world. Okay, because I was looking at one point, and I see you have a meeting for four four p.m. Um, New York time. Is that correct? Yeah, is it four p.m. time? No, that'd oh, be probably like UK time. I think we'd be home by then. Um, ah, okay. So I'll have to update these because that's my concern. I tried joining once. And it was just dead air. So, okay. Uh, if it's correct on the wiki, I'll go and have a look again. Thanks. Yeah, it, it should be 9 a.m. UTC and 5 p.m. UTC. Um, and they alternate different weeks. Okay, because when I clicked on it, it just added it, to, appended it to my calendar. But I'll go and have a look again. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, and yeah, uh, so on the lack of JavaScript skills note, um, I think <laughs> it's still possible to contribute to Composer um, because we have the modeling language, which allows you to describe your business network. You could contribute some models as samples and that, that'd be great. I mean, that doesn't require any coding or unit testing. Okay. I'll look into it. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I would just, uh, I, you know, that... go ahead, Tracy. Go sorry. Ahead, Chris. No, go ahead, well, Chris. I was just going to say, again, I think, and this applies to all projects, um, big or small, um, that, you know, contribution does not have to always be code. Um, con you know, d documentation is always inadequate in any open source project. Doesn't matter how good it is, it's, it's always inadequate. Um, and samples, as Simon suggested, are another uh, very effective way of improving documentation, improving consumability of a uh, piece of technology. Um, uh, but there's documentation, there's CI, right? Improving, you know, the testing, uh, you know, maybe not writing the, the core code, but maybe you have skills as a, uh, you know, a QA person contributing to testing documentation and, and, you know, but I, I do think, and, and I have, I agree, I've seen quite a bit of sort of end user community um, contribution, both in Rocket Chat and also in Stack Overflow for Composer. I'm, you know, it, it's, it's not clear to me why, you know, uh, people aren't uh, weighing in. Uh, I, I, I'm a little bit baffled because JavaScript is pretty popular language. And this is obviously an area where um, I think a lot of people have skills um, that aren't necessarily down in the crypto layer and require deep expertise and PhDs and stuff. Um, 
And so, uh, again, I think, you know, contributions are welcome and that applies across the board, not just Composer, Roja, Sawtooth, Fabric, Indie, um, in all, all shapes and sizes. Uh, I think uh, wonderful. That's a very good thing you've just said, Chris. So my question to uh, Simon is, can you basically harness the community via survey to see if you can conscript uh, <laughs> talented individuals via the community? Because you do have a, I wouldn't say um, an urgent need, but a pressing need to get more people on board to contribute. So some, some sort of questionnaire about... Um... Uh, well, there, there, are many way, words, there are many ways. Yeah, there are many approaches you can adopt. That's one of them. Okay. Yeah, we uh, could try and ask the community that we have um, as to why why they don't feel like they can contribute, or have they thought about uh, things yeah. that they might not necessarily have thought about contributing. One thing other communities have done is, um, and I don't know if you've done this, you, you probably have, um, is take a set of bugs in the issue tracker uh, and kind of mark them with like a special tag, like bite-sized, um, which indicate that they are good learning experiences. They're just large enough that it, it's something that encourages people to, to learn more about the internal architecture of something like Composer, um, but meaningful enough that it would help, you know, close, uh, close something on the path to a 1.0, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you've got a tag like that in the in the bug database. Yeah, on our on our GitHub repository, we have the good first issue label. Um, and there's only six open issues at the moment, so maybe we need to find some more. But we could also maybe do a better job of advertising that as a way to start. Yeah. Well, and I was just going to add on to that and suggest that you know part of the job of the members of the group is also to market the project. So wherever they're able to do demonstrations or get groups of people or appear, um, coupled with those bug bounties, if you will, uh, that's a good way to advertise and add, you know, get more activity and more eyes on your project. Yeah, yeah I think I, um, oh, this, this past week, somebody, and I, I can't remember who it was, uh, had posted in Twitter, right, about a, something, a new feature that wanted to be worked on and that they volunteered to be a mentor on the composer side and I really I really appreciated that I think that's really helpful for new people coming in is to, to make sure that there's somebody who's who's willing to help out right and, and help kind of work through that first process of uh, you know contributing I think it's a scary process and so uh, the more that uh, mentors can step up I think is, is really a good thing um, I also wanted to say, Leonard, the, the composer meeting is actually today at uh, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, if you're interested in joining. And, uh, and Chris, I wanted to agree. I think the composer team, right, by, by having the, the people in the community starting to answer questions, I think that's a really good sign, right, because that is a form of contribution that is highly overlooked, right? Uh, when people come in and can answer questions, it gives people uh, time to work on on other things, right? Uh, they, they don't have to answer those questions. So I think it's, you know, I, th I think there's good things happening. I think I just want to see more, right? Is, is was all I was uh, getting at by my question. So um, please don't take offense at the question. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks for the confirmation. I'll, ch I'll, I'll sign on at noon. Thank you. All right. Anything else for Simon? Just the, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, just I, it was just occurring to me too that, that one of the other factors at play is just time. So as as you're getting users, I think there's um, there's kind of a, a delay factor, and in, in once you know, it takes a while to ramp the users, and then once the users are comfortable, then they start contributing. So it, you know, it could be that you've got kind of a groundswell coming behind you. Right. I don't I don't recall how long you've been in incubation, but it's probably m much less than some of the other projects that have larger communities at this point. Yeah, that's true. We've only been around a, a year, I guess, um, now or just over a year. So <clears throat> it's worth bearing in mind. Okay. Anything else? All right. Thank you very much. Next up is the public sector working group. Oh, Who's Chris? We actually have the healthcare work group. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I oh, it is there. Okay, it, it is now. Yeah, so we're good. With oh, that. okay. I apologies. Um, and who's going to deliver that? This is Nate De Niro. Hi, Nate. Hello. Morning. Welcome. 
Uh, let's see here. So I'm just pulling up the document here, the, the wiki page rather. So <clears throat> yeah, the, uh, the Hyperledger Healthcare Working Group uh, is reconstituting itself. Uh, it's, it's interesting to hear uh, a lot of the recommendations because I can affirm that when you have a single person or company in, in charge of your, well, uh, chairing the group rather, um, when you lose them, uh, the group certainly can lose momentum. So over the past couple of years, you know, we've, we've uh, got, gotten things going um, and uh, at the end of last year lost uh, the person sort of leading the group. So we're reconstituting again. We've uh, elected new board members um, and uh, have run a number of surveys to find out what people are interested in and also collected a list of about 44, 45 names of people who are ready to contribute. So we're moving through the stage of deciding what it is that we want to build and also who it is uh, across other uh, work groups we, we need and want to collaborate with. Uh, so that's, that's essentially the stage we're at at the moment. Okay. So yeah, the overall activity in the past quarter has been largely just that organizing uh, reorganizing organizing interests um, Thank you. Discuss, discussing with the group we've started a, a bi-weekly call uh, for the entire group and then the uh, leadership group meets usually about once a week so can you can you describe basically how many people are coming to the to the calls and participating yeah, I'd say on the calls we have a good twenty-five uh, or thirty people every couple weeks, and then so there's there's definitely interest. Oh, there's definitely interest, and in, and we did a survey last year uh, when some folks from Gem had been leading the group just to find out where everyone is at, and uh, we basically did a repeat of that survey to find out where things are this year, and it is interesting to see some progression in some of the areas, um, but also as a way of capturing interest because you know healthcare. <clears throat> healthcare is in terms of an industry pretty complex and deals with lots of complex data and consent and all kinds of weird stuff. So um, I, I've actually been involved in other uh, open source uh, healthcare communities, the Open EMR project and uh, a bit with Ocera Vista. And um, you know, it's it, healthcare is a tough place to get people to participate. However, I feel like we have uh, carried a group of uh, a core group of people for a period of time who are itching to do stuff. And uh, we're just trying to, to figure out what that is and let them get going, you know, obviously in an organized fashion. <laughs> so. Also at the, uh, the healthcare working group is really helpful um, with the prep for hymns. Um, Hyperledger had a booth at HIMSS, uh, and this was in March, and we had members of the healthcare working group um, demoing and talking about Hyperledger from our booth. Um, this included, you know, companies that weren't aren't official sponsoring members of Hyperledger, which is great. Uh, so and it, it felt like a, a good good coming together of folks there. We've also had a couple of um, members of the healthcare working group helping uh, edit some of the uh, use cases on the wiki. Um, that are healthcare related, and um, that would be, be great to see more of, I think. Yeah, and that goes to the idea that there's more to contribute than just code. <clears throat> you know, we're, we're actually on the other end of the spectrum where we've got people, you know, uh, a wellspring of people interested to contribute and uh, no code yet. And that's not, you know, a huge issue. I think we're going to, you know, forward that over the next. Um, you know, several months. And that's one of the questions I had about OSCON planning, uh, if, if Hyperledger is going to be there and what si kind of presence. Um, but, uh, you know, and then the marketing of things as well, for sure, like um, making people aware of it. I mean, because there's so much confusion around blockchain in general that, um, you know, I'm, 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 all, I'm regularly educating people on what Hyperledger actually is as opposed to what they think it is. So. So, so anyways, um, in terms of diversity, I feel like we do have a very diverse group. Um, 
you know, in the States, when we talk about healthcare, we tend to talk about the American system and forget about the fact that there's other systems elsewhere, um, you know, certainly in, in open source, that is uh, more of a present issue uh, just because things are different, done differently, different conditions and environments all over the world. So um, we do have participants all over the world, from all over the world. And um, I don't have numbers on gender in terms of diversity, but I, I definitely know that there's a, a a, a, a mixture of genders and uh, and and healthcare that's important for sure. Um, something that I know I, I know that we want to pay attention to. So, um, but that's that's where things are at. You know, we have another meeting coming up here uh, in the next week, and um, that's the meeting where basically we're going to break out into subgroups and start working on problems. Um, We've also identified some cross-pollination opportunities, of course, with the Identity Working Group. And I can imagine that uh, now hearing about Composer, uh, I'm, I wasn't really aware of it, but I'm kind of excited about it so I can see us working with them and you know, obviously others as well. Excellent. Excellent. So it sounds like things are getting back on track, which is it's good to hear. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I I think there's actually frustration within the group that there's we're, we're not more formed and uh, people are actually contributing code and or you know other contributions. So this is honest speaking. I, I find it interesting that you know it seems like the group is there is a lot of interest and yet they they seem to be struggling a little bit defining what they want to achieve, and and you know we have had discussions to better structure working groups and the way they are being proposed. And we have one coming up with the public work group. And, you know, I wonder if it would be a useful exercise for you guys to look at the template we are now using and we are just going to discuss one. I hope we have time. Um, and, and to see if you guys could develop your own kind of charter type of thing to see, maybe it would help frame the discussion. Yeah, I think it's well. It's it's a couple things, right? It's the, it's that that thing I mentioned at the top of um, having a diversity in the group and a diversity of leadership. So that's what we're trying to establish right now. But then, in terms of how we function, um, you know, I've been asking that question: if there's any standard sort of framework that the, the groups within Hyperledger operate under. So um, we'll take that. It sounds like there is, and take a look at that. Um, uh, ahead of our next meeting as well and add that to the agenda so we can we can talk about that because it's you know any any tools like that that help us organize because as, as everyone's pointed out we all either run for small or big you know we all have jobs <laughs> in addition generally uh, if we're not you know working for for Linux Foundation so yeah tools so, like that are helpful. Speaking of which Brian do you have anybody from the staff involved in the working group that can help guide the group? Oh, there yes. is. Yeah, that's happening. I, okay. I would not say that that's not happening. That, that's not happening. All right. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, any other questions? Renate? Uh, I have no questions. On, on, I was just going to say, on, on the coding projects, there's there's kind of a concept of a duocracy. And so you can, you can also take that within the, the working groups that if there's specific agenda that you want to move forward just by doing it, it's more likely to get done than trying to um, kind of sense everybody's interests and everybody kind of sits around the table looking at each other waiting for somebody to move. Some, something that I would see of, of big value coming out of the working group would be uh, a well uh, or completely written use case. So staying away from the how, uh, let the, the technical teams figure out how they would go about implementing it, but just having something that's more or less ratified by healthcare concerns hmm. to say that uh, here's an unmet need in the industry and the aspects of, of the what and the why, and then leaving it to the, the technical groups to figure out how to satisfy that would be, would be something that would be a pretty big outcome from a working group. It's um, actually, uh, I guess I didn't list, list that, uh, but that is, that is basically what we've spent the quarter doing in a large part, you know, through the surveys and the meetings and, and just can canvassing interest, 
we, we agreed and arrived at, uh, you know, our own small framework of use cases. And that's the, that's the next step, uh, you know, as everyone organizes into uh, subgroups and identifies what type of work product they want to contribute. Um, the first step is those use cases. So, you know, as you point out, that's where, that's where exactly where we're at that point. Excellent. I'm on mute. I was going to say, okay, thanks, Nate. Yeah. Um, next up is the proposal for the public sector working group, but we have seven minutes left. Who's pitching this? Hey, it's, it's, you know, Marta and myself, um, but I'll just uh, jump in and say, um, we, re we wouldn't really ever want to drop a proposal on uh, this group. It's just one day to read it. Um, so I didn't want to call for a vote this time, but, um, you know, now that we have a template in place, um, there's a, a couple of working groups I think we'd like to propose. Um, and uh, first we thought we'd start with uh, one that tries to bring together a lot of the folks we've talked to in government who are, pretty hands-on, pretty technical, and, and really interested in Hyperledger. Um, and uh, and so rather than call it the government working group, because the term is a little, um, uh, the term government is over, overloaded a bit. Plus there's a lot of private sector companies that engage on government related projects. Um, we thought a better name for it would be the um, public sector working group. Um, I, the only challenge is that <laughs> there's also a performance and scalability working group. Um, so uh, uh, PSWG might be, become overloaded too, but um, uh, I think it was worth it. Uh, anyways, uh, in, so this is our, our kind of first draft of trying to map to the template, but also kind of the flow for format for, for these. And so thought I just, we would just wanted to draw people's attention to it, to think about it over the next week, and then maybe we could vote on it next week. Um, but if anyone felt that, you know, if the TSC felt it was solid enough now and wanted to approve it, that would be great too. Are there any questions about kind of the intent or or the goals or comments on what people have read so far? I'm sorry, I'm still digesting it. Um, any questions for people? I mean, for anybody, does anybody have any questions or? Uh, comments for Brian or Marta. Oh, this well, is course. Leonard. I've had a look at it. I think it's a very good framework. So Marta, Brian, and the team we put together, that's a wonderful start because it, it basically uh, comp comp uh, compiles a list of many interesting companies all wanting to collaborate and work together in that space. So it's uh, very exciting. I think public sector needs that approach. So a good first day, so thanks and well done. I wanted to thank everyone who reached out to me privately uh, after publishing a TSC mailing list and asked me to uh, join, uh, put them on the mailing list if the working group gets formed. Uh, and I will put you on that mailing list, definitely. Um, we are going to Dubai with Brian next week to uh, the Global Blockchain Summit. Uh, so we will be also meeting their people from the government sector and uh, Smart Dubai. Uh, and uh, everyone's very, very excited uh, knowing that uh, Hyperledger is working with a lot of government entities and uh, enterprises that want to work on that. So I know that there is a lot of interest, uh, but obviously we've been working very hard not to launch it too soon and make sure that everything's running smoothly and uh, there are no glitches there. Anybody Marta. have any, <clears throat> does anybody have a need to further review this? Um, I mean, I'm hearing a lot of fairly positive things. And from my perspective, it looks. I, I was gonna jump in real quick, Chris. Um, this is Dave Hughesby, um, Marta and Brian, uh, I guess, the Vegas meetup group will merge our code base in with the, the public sector one because we've been working on a, 
a pilot proof of concept to track uh, marriage licenses and, and efficiency in the greater Las Vegas area for the Clark County clerk. So that would be public sector, I guess. So that's some code we can get in there and start, um, you know, bootstrapping around that. So would, do you, would you see this in, be inclusive of um, impact business or, you know, social or impact focused? Probably not. I mean, I, I know there's there's gray area and overlap. Um, I think though there's a lot of social impact businesses that aren't really um, related to the public sector. Um, and I think I might even merit a separate working group. Um, yeah. Uh, or or you know it, it, it's one thing we've wrestled with, right? There's a lot of social impact uh, applications in healthcare or in um, FinServ. So so I think the design of these, you know, the scope of these working groups is something we're going to be careful with, um, just to help help it be clear, you know, that there's when there's we try to avoid overlap where people feel like they have to be on on five different working groups because they're not well defined. Yeah. No, I was thinking about it because I was talking to someone at consensus yesterday in, in the social impact space and she felt like Hyperledger was competitive with consensus. And so I'm, I'm wondering, that's why I see Sovereign on there and I'm, I'm, I, I wouldn't, I, I, I don't think that's necessarily true. That perception. So I'm, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're a big tent. <laughs> I know awesome. exactly. Yes. So I, I, I think um, that one of the good ideas would be to actually work uh, with consensus and invite them to collaborate with us uh, within that group. I I wouldn't be opposed to that. That's what I was um, going to suggest, Marta. So, hey, so I got a I have a couple of questions. Um, so w when just in looking through this, trying to figure out, and sorry for the bird. Um, the, it, it, is the focus on usages, on proofs of concepts, pilots, or is there a, is there also a role for, um, informed policy, um, coming out of this? I, I, would, I think we, we need, I'm having a hard time figuring out what the, the sort of main emphasis is. Well, I, as I hope is reflected well in the description, um, it's about, Canvas, basically mapping the landscape, trying to figure out where are the good ideas, where are the good projects, what are people doing, be kind of supportive to the to each member um, in terms of, hey, how do we figure out how to do this? Um, I, uh, I, we definitely want to stay away from anything that looks or smells like lobbying. Um, right. And uh, if there was something about, hey, what should a government's uh, regulatory policy be about, uh, you know, recognizing the legitimacy of smart contracts as legal contracts, that's, that's something we would stay away from. I think this right. is more about hey we're building an ID system. How do okay. we? Do okay, because that's different. I, I, there is there is also a need though. I don't know that it needs to come out of this organization. There's also a need for some um, uh, representation for technical expertise on government policy as well. I know we've we've seen that issue come up several times, um, and it, you know if we can establish um, sort of a, a reputation and, and again this is this is where it's going to cross the you know be very close to that fine line between don't become a lobbyist but um is there a way or is it would, would it be appropriate for this organization to sort of become experts that and be represented and respected as the experts for advice in informing policy yeah, not not on this working group for sure. Yeah. Because I, don't I, I I got it. And the, it sounds like what you're talking about is sort of pre work that might lead into that, but we're not there yet. So. Well, but this is also about the the mechanics of building stuff, you know, or the the you know. Um, I think we're things. hitting into the next meeting here. We are. Yep. yep. All right. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. And so let's take this discussion to the mailing list, um, and we'll bring it back up for consideration next week. So thanks everybody and uh, Thank you. I'll see you all soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks everyone. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.